2015, Mohammad Nazir, a 44-year-old sweet seller from Agra, petitioned the President of India. He was requesting permission for six of his eight children to be euthanized. By the age of two, the children were afflicted by a crippling neurological disease that resulted in seizures, limited movement, muscular dystrophy, and impaired growth. Doctors couldn't diagnose the condition, and Nazir was desperate to end their suffering. The family's plight caught the attention of K. V. Shamsuddin, who studies rare diseases as part of a project called Guardian at the CSIR's Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology. The mystery disease fascinated CSIR's resident scientists Shridhar Sivasubhu and Vinod Skarya, India's leading experts on genomics. The team then embarked on a two-year-long quest to find the solution to the puzzle. And we contacted back the family and uh, sort of uh, we informed them so we can help them regarding the uh, diagnosis of this disorder by using uh, genomics approaches. So the family sort of agreed. The very next day we got another call from uh, one of the NGO, that is Human Welfare Foundation, uh, informed us by saying that uh, they can assist all the medical, uh, they have uh, all the medical team along with them. So any uh, requirement from uh, their part, they can do it. Uh, we have discussed this case with Dr. Shafali Gulati and she uh, agreed to take this family or, or see this family. Using whole exome sequencing, a technique which analyzes the protein coding region of the human genome for genetic variations, the cause of the disease was determined. A single gene mutation was the root of all the problems affecting Nazir's children. The human genome contains the chromosomes which carry the genes comprising the DNA. A genome has around 3.1 billion DNA base pairs and there are 20,000 odd protein coding genes. These are carried on the 22 pairs of chromosomes along with 23 being the sex chromosome. A genetic mutation causes vital proteins to be absent or formed in ways that are harmful. While most diseases are caused by several genes going awry, some are the result of a single aberrant one. Nazir and his wife Tabasum were both carriers of a mutation on the MLC1 gene on chromosome 21. However, it did not affect them as the mutation existed in only one of the copies of the chromosome. Thus, there was a 1 in 4 chance that their children could get the mutation in both the copies of the chromosome. The scientists had discovered a new mutation, the Nalband mutation. Six of his children had a pair of this defective gene. Present mutation was not present in any one of the uh, Indian population previously. We went back and searched the history of the family. So they, they belong to a Nalban community. And we figured it out that this Nalban community actually originated from Iran and they migrated along with uh, Mughal dynasty and they spread, uh, spread across Pakistan, uh, Sindh and um, certain part of um, Haryana and uh, predominantly they are based on Agra and Aligarh. Now the question was, why were so many of Nazir's children affected? Uh, both the parents are having um, uh, one defective copy each. So we hypothesized that in this entire uh, community it could be present. So we went back to the community and we uh, convinced the family by saying that it could be possible that there will be more families in the community. Over two years, Shamsuddin visited Agra with Human Welfare Foundation workers and knocked on several doors in Nazir's neighborhood. After giving crash courses in genetics, he would ask residents for blood samples. Once we got the, uh, these uh, samples and uh, we uh, reconstructed the fa family pedigree and we found that all these affected members are closely related. Nazir and Tabasum are cousins. Endogamy or marrying within the community is a practice across various parts of India. 82 members of the community who live within half a kilometer of Nazir's family have the mutation. So far, the team has found that nearly 28% of the community carries the defective gene. Social and cultural practices might be difficult to change, but the team at Guardian has now made it easy to identify the Nalband mutation. So the, the Guardian was a discovery phase, so we discovered a new mutation. There's a second program within IGAB which started a year ago, which is called the GOMED. Okay? Okay. It is called Genomics for Enabling Medical Decisions. Okay. Okay. So there's a single test set. Yeah, where this thing, we transfer the single test to them. Okay. Now this community is on an average about 5,000 members and for now going back and doing the 82 families, 
it is just a maybe a 500 rupees to a thousand rupee test per individual. So you're not spending a lakh a rupee anymore. Anymore. We formed the uh, consulting clinician. It was um, Dr. Shufali Gulati from AIMS. She said that all our uh, clinical finding is actually mat uh, matching with the uh, diagnosis, genetic diagnosis uh, that you have made. So then straight away we are going to start prophylactic drug. So once they started this drug, um, the, after almost uh, two, two and a half months, the father called me back by saying that uh, you have a happy news where uh, the first, uh, the, the youngest child, Aban, started going to school. And uh, another uh, next month, again he called me by saying that one more child started going to school. At present, uh, there is no cure for MLC1, but uh, there are a lot of researches going, uh, going around for this disorder around the globe. So there are uh, many groups working on this particular disorder. So uh, in future, we can expect. There was a time when this family wanted the father, the patriarch and his family wanted six of his children to be euthanized. But those days are gone. He, the, his children are not going to be free from this disease. But the, the, the genomic knowledge has gone in some way to ensure that he might probably instruct his children better or he might uh, have some influence in, in dictating the way the, the family will manage their future better.